Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. Did you know that some of the everyday products you use might actually be made by prisoners? It's a fascinating and often overlooked aspect of our consumer culture. Yeah, you heard that right. It's pretty surprising, isn't it? In today's video, I'm diving into the surprising world of prison labor and the unexpected things created by inmates. Let's get started. First up, lingerie. Believe it or not, inmates once sewed lingerie for none other than Victoria's Secret. This was part of a program aimed at providing inmates with job skills. Yup, those fancy undergarments could have been stitched behind bars. It's wild, isn't it? The idea of something so intimate being made in such a stark environment is quite a contrast. Next on the list, we have canoes. In Colorado, inmates are crafting durable canoes. These canoes are known for their quality and craftsmanship. Imagine paddling down a river in something made by someone serving time. It's a unique experience blending the serenity of nature with the complex realities of the prison system. Talk about a unique story to tell your friends. It's not every day you get to share such an interesting tidbit. Military jackets and baseball hats are also on the list. These items are often produced with great attention to detail. These are produced by Unicor, a government corporation that utilizes inmate labor. Unicor aims to provide inmates with work experience and skills that can help them reintegrate into society. So next time you're rocking that cool cap, remember it might have an interesting backstory. It's a conversation starter for sure. How about some blue jeans? These wardrobe staples have a surprising origin. Yes, prisoners are involved in the production of those too. Denim is a tough fabric, and the work requires skill and precision. Your favorite pair of jeans might just have a little more history sewn into them than you thought. It's amazing to think about the journey these items take before reaching us, and it doesn't stop there. The range of products made by inmates is truly extensive. McDonald's uniforms, dentures, park furniture, and even caskets are all made by prisoners across different states. Each of these items has its own story and purpose. It's incredible to think about the range of products that come out of the prison system. The skills and craftsmanship involved are impressive. Now let's talk about something a bit more artistic. Art can be a powerful form of expression and rehabilitation. At San Quentin State Prison, inmates create art. These programs provide a creative outlet and can be therapeutic. This raises all kinds of questions about the ethical implications and potential benefits of such programs. It's a topic that sparks a lot of debate. Is it commodification or is it a form of expression and rehabilitation? The lines can be blurry and opinions vary widely. It's definitely something to ponder. The balance between providing opportunities and ensuring fair treatment is delicate. So what does all this mean? How do we reconcile the benefits and the ethical concerns? Prison labor is a complex and controversial topic. It involves many layers of social, economic, and ethical considerations. On one hand, it provides inmates with skills and a sense of purpose. These programs can be a stepping stone to a better future. On the other hand, the wages are often minimal, and the ethics are murky. The debate over fair compensation and exploitation is ongoing. In conclusion, the next time you pick up a product, whether it's a pair of jeans or a piece of art, take a moment to consider its origins. The story behind it might be more complex than you think. Prison labor is more intertwined with our daily lives than we might realize. It's a topic worth exploring and understanding. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more intriguing content. Your support helps us bring more fascinating stories to life. See you in the next video. Take care and stay curious.